pigeons have an amazing ability to navigate long distance journeys with unparalleled accuracy. You never can be sure with pigeons, they're always looking for that special one. But who raises and races these fearless flyers? Pigeon men are a, a breed of their own, like you know, it's in the blood. From exotics to pets, we find out why people dedicate so much of their time to them. You want to get the best results you can. You don't get results if you don't put the work in. Race season is finally upon us. With that comes both excitement and nerves. I don't know if I'll sleep from now. Once I go away, I'll be like, but there's nothing you can do. Once they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. It's time to see if hours of training and hard work have paid off for the pigeon people. On, boys. It's the night before the first race of the season and the fanciers have to bring their birds to their local clubs. Noel and Keeley race with the Northern Ireland Pigeon Association and Ronnie and Claire are with the East Down Combine. I'm really excited for the start of the season. 17 to 18,000 birds are racing tomorrow. The EDC are racing from Tullamore and the NIPA are close by in Kilbegan. Conditions tomorrow is absolutely fine. We're very, very late. Northeast wind turning north. Very little wind at all, so it's going to be a very good, steady race. I'm very hopeful, two or three winners away, but you never know the first race. It's very difficult to get the right pigeon. I don't think any wind suits me, um, but east, if there was a bit of east in it, that would suit me. I definitely don't want a west wind, because then these ones over here will all get in for me. I'm now secretary of my club, which is a really good honour. You're essentially just checking the numbers on the clock match up with the ring numbers, so it means there's no cheating going on and that the bird registered is actually the bird flying in the race. We all have our own clock and all the birds' information and all the birds' details are on that clock. After Norman has put it through, then I can't handle the bird again, so somebody else has to put it into the crate before going to the race. And um, that's just so that um, I can't tamper with the bird in any way, not that I would. 22V. Nine one eight seven six. Nine one eight. Sixty-seven. No, seventy-six. Nine one eight. No, it's not going. It's wrong ring number. Take it off. The number on the chip doesn't match the number on the pigeon, so can't go. I say I'm ready. Take this back to the loft. Put it into the system. And then they'll come automatically times them in. It's a great system, Lee. Like. I've only entered 15, which is quite small compared to some of the members who have entered 49, 50. But as Dad always says, quality over quantity. And I do think our birds are great quality. Well, they're ready to go, but tomorrow will tell the tale whether they're ready or not. That's them away now, so it's out of our hands, so fingers crossed uh, for tomorrow and we'll just have to wait and see what the result is. Tomorrow evening everybody was sitting anxiously waiting for the result. It's a good day to get beat. <laughs> I said off yourself. <laughs> Absolutely excellent day for a pigeon race. I reckon the birds should do it oh, 15, 1600. They'll not be about a minute, but they'll not be far off it. And the birds are off. It's a short sprint race to start the season, roughly 90 miles. With different distances to fly, the winner isn't the first one home. It's whichever bird completes the journey fastest. I would be fairly confident that the be over the leaders, why, whether we win or not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. They're as good as conditions I, I could get them. My thrill is seeing them coming and hopefully hitting the deck first time, it, it, it's, it's lovely. And it's a bit better if you win the race, obviously. But we're all in the same boat, so we're all trying to do the same thing. First I've been training them well. Mine beating Dad, you know, the usual. So there's not really much we can do at this point. Like it's just up to how the birds perform and how they're cleared at the liberation site. The real competition's at home <laughs> between me, Dad, and Grandy. <laughs> it's, it's of depends on <laughs> who's to make the tea and coffee after the race. Usually it's me. Like 
the two birds I thought were going to do best for me and what Dad and Grand I thought were going to do best. One of them got hit by the wires, which was 48. Um, that was our RPRA, RPRA award winner. And then the melee, it, it, it hadn't come home, so I think it maybe hit the wires too and it just didn't make it. This is Keeley's best pigeon from last year. So on Tuesday morning, the birds were their heads hopping with the north wind. And I noticed them. I did see them going up through the electric wires. He's been at the back of the batch. So the front of the batch can see the wires. So he's been at the back and the birds have lifted and he hasn't seen them. And he's collided with them. So, But he'll be fine. He's absolutely fine. He's eating, he's drinking. He's in good health. Apart from that, he'll not race this year now. We'll just let him sit. When it comes to race day, we let the hens all come in here and then the cocks know and the hens know that when they're flying, once they get back they'll be able to have time with their partner. It'll give them an incentive to come home faster. I'm hoping in the next sort of eight, nine, nine minutes. Could be a wee bit longer but I hope not. Today's race, there. It's the sort of the, the race point is in the it's about the middle of Ireland and say with very little wind today the ship is coming straight up here and coming straight from the southwest straight to the loft here. That's the way they should be coming today. Yeah, it's a waiting game and it's an anxious time too, you know, you you're always hopeful that the first pigeons you see are your own. You don't want to see any other fanciers pigeons going over or going past you, because that means that you're not up with the result, you're not there. Shouldn't be too long now. Oreo is her name. And she's no race rings on because she was missed. But if I go in here, she want to call it. She gets excited and then she lands on my head or shoulders or something. It's getting her off now is the problem. Oh. If something happens to them in the right, you have no control over it. It's only when they're in the loft you have control. Over at Ronnie's, there's a potential arrival. There you are. Oh, no. It's a crow. A crow. You get caught out. <whistles> there's indeed a pigeon. Go on, white. Go on. Go on. There you are, right under the hall. Go on. Well done. There you are. Good boy. Go on. Go on. There they're clocked now. Bit quicker than we thought. Good start. I'm, I'm happy with that. I think they'll be there. Hopefully they'll be there thereabouts. I'd like to get them in the first six in the club. Come on, boy. Come on. 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 That's the first one now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Brilliant. That boy's just dropped straight out of the heavens. Just about the time we expect it. Where's the pigeon? Oh. It seems there's better luck in Maharlin. Good trap, get a good trap. There's another one. Oh, He's coming out of Lurgan. There's three minutes after we've seen that batch. That's all cocks first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bit different than usual. Yep. The hands will come. With the pigeons back home, it's time to check the clocks. This is Keely's. It would be good if mine does in the second quarter too. That's how many you've six, six home. Ooh. So you're in at 11, 45, 27 seconds. My number? 11, 46, 11, 46. Is that my number? Yep. 11, 47, 11, 51, 51. So you're in at 45, 45 27. 27. So let's see what I'm in at. It's worth the money. <laughs> Although we've got like five together. But you've got nine home. Forty five oh nine. I beat Keely by six, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. I so. told you I had a feeling he was gonna beat me. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna get slagged in the club. You're second. What's that smell, Keely? Oh, smell of victory. Smell of victory. You're funny. <laughs> And over at Claire's loft, all her birds returned, but unfortunately, they weren't quick enough for a club position.
Today, fanciers from across Ireland are race marking for one of the most prestigious races of the season, the Penzance Yearling National. It's everybody from the north and south, and uh, everybody's competing together, so it's a national. Um, so yeah, so there's prizes for section prizes, so there's the winner, south section, winner, north section, and then there's an open, so that could be anybody from either two sections that wins the open. I've been a bag of nerves all morning, like I haven't ate or anything. <laughs> um, I did get a good sleep last night, but I don't know if I'll sleep from now. Once I go away, I'll be like, but there's nothing you can do. Once they're gone, they're gone, and that's it. Two cocks first. Thank you. Penzance is a very good race for me. I have clocked a lot of good pigeons out of Penzance. I'm saying it's six because this last couple of weeks they've went off a bit. They haven't performed the way I'd like them, you know. Claire may be thinking that 12 birds are too many. Somebody sent 14 and somebody sent 15, but everybody else that I've asked so far, it's like two, three, four. I only sent six last year, so I'm sort of thinking I've got double the chance this year. Every race is a risk. Some of them will just not brave the water, probably. You know, they just won't come home. This is one of the most prestigious races of the year, so this is one of the ones you want to get in on, so. I don't know if it's adrenaline or nerves or what it is, but I'm a bit all over the place. <laughs> you could get 6,000, 7,000 pigeons here. Very, very competitive. We all think that we have the right pigeon away. We're all hoping that we get it in time. And basically what we want is to get them all home safely. With the birds dropped off and making their way to Penzance, there's nothing more the fanciers can do. The pigeons have to fly 320 miles and cross the Irish Sea to reach Knowles Loft in Ballyclare. The thing about pigeon racing is, when you send pigeons away, they're not yours anymore. You're not yours until they come home. Usually up Ireland racing, you probably get 99% of your pigeons home. You don't lose that many. But once they go across the channel, it's a different it's a different type of racing, especially with yearlings. Some of them might not face the channel, have never seen the water before. Probably hundreds of hours waiting for pigeons. <laughs> when you get them, it's worthwhile. It always gives you that wee, wee adrenaline and that wee flow, like you're always glad to see them home. At Clare's Loft in Grey Abbey, the birds have yet to arrive. She's just got word that other fanciers have birds back. There's uh, there's birds in not too far from home, Moira direction and Amalong direction, so hopefully we'll get something soon. Well, the reason behind me preferring channel racing, that probably all comes from Dali because Dali never ever was interested in racing up the land. It was all about flying across the water because well, it's like he says, he even says it now, he says that's where the glory is. Some that they're close. I'm ringing Dally to tell them to come out while I nip in for a pee, but there's one in my that I'm near enough sure I've just seen text message. Any luck, I just got one. That's Donica Day actually, that's in. They get about eight mile on me the most. I'm missing answer just phone. Come on! It's a big ask for a pigeon. Um, so when you get one, like yeah, it's a sense of pride. Like they're, you know, you're proud that your pigeon has done that, in amongst some of the top pigeon men in the country. You just have to keep thinking. You know, you have to keep going if you want the results, which I do. You know, I want to get them results, especially out of them bigger races, because I want everybody to know my name. So yeah, you just have to keep thinking about the future and what's ahead and you want to get the best results you can. You don't get results if you don't put the work in, so. I feel a bit, now that I've got one, you know, like, that, no, it's good that I got one. I'm just like, I would like another, I don't want to be greedy like, but I would like another cup. <laughs> That's the way pigeon racing is. You have to accept the good and the bad. When you get one out of Penzance, it's always nice. Penzance has always been a very, a very, very lucky race for me. It's 10.30 at night and the birds are being loaded for the Fermoy Young Bird Race. Both Gerald Delaney and Keely Wright are taking part. 
the race today for us is 177 miles and 30 yards. So, you know, that's how far the birds have to fly. So it is a tough race for them. We can't control the weather. They were originally meant to go at half 10 this morning and now there'll be no update until half 12. We think they're going to be moved to a different liberation site because at the minute for Moy, it's completely covered over. They can't get a release. So most likely they'll bring them closer to home. The NIPA have been releasing updates every half hour to an hour. At the minute, the birds are being moved. The weather is that bad down there that they can't release them. And in Drummore, The convoy arrived in Ross Cray approximately 45 minutes ago. The water on the birds were kept on with them on the journey and was topped up on arrival at Ross Cray. Strings are being cut at present and liberation is very likely around 2 p.m. Well, as I said, it is what it is, so. There's not a whole lot we can do, only wait for them coming home and winning the race. <laughs> Hopefully. Five hours late and 80 miles closer, the birds are finally released. That's how you know when, when a pigeon's a good, uh, a pigeon sponsor is a good racer or a bad racer. If he's a happy town, he's a bad racer, he's always looking up at the sky. Getting a suntan there, a good racer, he's has her home and in. Well, you've got a good face down there. I know, I have. I'm a bad racer. <laughs> there can only be one winner, and I hope it's me today. <laughs> a good sign there, Daddy Longlegs. Love Daddy Longlegs. You see them, yeah. It's good luck. I'm very, very, very superstitious. Yeah, when it comes to pigeons and different things. But uh, 13 especially. I wouldn't put 13 pigeons in a crate, or I wouldn't bring 13 crates to the club. It's getting near their time. 11 months past, that's a good, 11's a good number. There's one. I see it, I see it. Finally, pigeons arrive, but it's not quite the result Gerald was hoping for. Are you Stevens? That'll keep him happy today. <laughs> That's great. He has been in front all year, so it's good to, to get one up on him today. He beat me. <laughs> That's a good result for Stephen there. I'm three, four. Oh, you got three. Well, three to go, and they're not in mind. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Gerald eventually got some come of his on, birds come on, home. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But his hopes for an open win today on, have been on, dashed. The open about one, I don't think about one over this part of the world, you know, but maybe the section, I don't know, we'll see. Over Achilles, the first bird has finally arrived. There's one there. But oh. it's reluctant to land. It's been spooked by something. I can't see anything in the sky, so this is what Dad's doing now. He's releasing a trapper. So this wee bird is going to try to get it in. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And just my luck, Dad has beat me. Can really see him now, I see his face. <laughs> Normally, we should be in within the first minute. I think we've lost maybe four or five minutes there. Come on, come on. And it's the same story with the second bird. I can't see anything today. Usually, we have a sparrow hockey hangs about over there, but not today. That's unreal. Never ever like this. Never get a bad trap. For both pigeons to be losing over three minutes each is really bad. A few things probably the moving about of the pigeons from the race points, sitting dehydrated, the lorries, pigeons not drinking, the east wind doesn't help them at all either. So there's a quite a lot of variables about the day. We trained for a longer race this week, so we were training for the likes of Fromoy which is 177 miles from us. And then in reality, they got moved to Ross Gray. So that's 120 miles. So the birds are gonna have a lot more corn in them. So they're not gonna to wanna to fly home, you know, to get more food. I think at this point, we don't actually care about, you know, who wins. When the birds are coming this bad, you sort of hope that you just get as many as you can home. Like at the minute, we've only two home and we sent 28 away. So my, that's my first one. Go down and check. They're all dads. Lovely. As more birds arrive, it's clear 
it's been a tough journey. This bird was in the race. You can see underneath his wings, he is really, really sweaty. And his wings are completely dropped on. Like they'll just sit like that naturally now. For the next few while, you can see it there on the other side too. Normally their tails go below their wings. Um, so he's had a really tough fly. Um, he'll definitely not be out for the next few days just so he can recover. So today was the last race for me and Keely to compete against each other for this season. Uh, I probably just pipped her at the end there. Mm -hmm. uh, about two races. Yeah, just so, a while. Uh, have a look next year, kid. Thanks. Appreciate it. Today has been a tough race for me. Um, Dad got maybe four or five pins in before me, so he's definitely in the lead. Um, but I'm not too worried about it. The shows are right around the corner, and I know I beat him at all of them, so I'm not worried at all. And showing's the thing I really excel at, you know, it's the time we spend the most money and energy into, so I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm.